Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, 2020 edition of Manufacturing in the Age of Experience. My name is Guillaume Vendroux. I'm the CEO of Delmia, uh, the brand in Dassault Systems Manufacturing and Operation. And I'm obviously very pleased uh, to be with you today, if only uh, virtually, uh, for this very special edition, the sixth edition of Manufacturing in the Age of Experience. It's a new context, obviously, uh, and therefore it's a new format. It's going to be totally digital over two days, uh, 90 minutes uh, tomorrow, today and 90 minutes tomorrow, during which we want to embark you uh, in a journey, in a quest, the quest for sustainable operations. If you remember, last year we established a framework for sustainability or the sustainability transformation of our operations. Uh, it was based on three pillars, three focus, people, planet, profit. Um, and this year, we want to go one step further. We want to give more proof points, more illustration that those pillars are indeed the way to engage into the digital transformation. Um, and so um, we will take this occasion as well to demonstrate uh, the value that the 3D Experience platform can provide to you uh, during uh, this, uh, this transformation. It's a new context, it's a new format, uh, it's also a new uh, animations. And therefore, let me introduce to you uh, my co-host uh, during those two days that we will spend, obviously, uh, respecting all the uh, legislation and then security measures uh, here and the social distancing with Pentru. Hey, hi, thank you for having me. I'm so, I'm so thrilled to, uh, here, to be here. And to be honest, that's pretty incredible. So because I'm from eSports, as you can tell by my headset, and you're from the industry, so can I call this event like an industry event? Be my guest, be my guest. <laughs> so welcome for this very first industry event. And you will be part, so that, like you said, of two uh, part experience of so today and tomorrow and don't forget you are we are you can ask us questions through the socials so on twitter on facebook on youtube and on linkedin and you have the hashtag the quest by 3ds so hashtag the quest by 3ds and you will be able to ask questions to our experts to our ceos and our, and you'll see it's going to be a thrill so basically this experience will be announced by the 3d experience platform by uh, Dassault system yes and uh, as I said, there is like a twin virtual experience that's quite amazing and that will embark all the teams in a virtual environment that will produce very, very you know, sharply the reality. So I'm very excited about that. But I don't want to spoil too many things. So uh, I think that maybe you have a very special guest to introduce. Yes, indeed. Um, as you may know, uh, since the very beginning, Sustainability is at the core of Dassault System, it's at the core of our values, it's at the core of our purpose, it's, it's who we are. And so this very special guest insisted very much to be part and to be with us today to discuss about sustainability. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to open up uh, the sixth edition of Manufacturing uh, in the Age of Experience with Bernard, Char Bernard Charles, uh, our uh, Vice Chairman and CEO. Okay, well, <laughs> such a speaker to enter into this new uh, no era. So, so basically what's going to happen from my point of view is a very interactive journey with teams. And so we won't talk that about, about later. But so what if for you the main focus on 2020 about this event? Because the world changed very, busy, very profoundly. So how this tool do you think we're going to help the teams to be more and more efficient in 2020, like very briefly? Well, it is clear that um, we, uh, we ambition to share uh, the trend, the views, the way uh, we think that industry should go forward. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, hopefully during those two days, this is what all of you uh, in front of your screens will, will be able to capture um, the vision and the way to change. Yeah, so that, that will be a big challenge for our teams and, I, I, and you on the socials and living, uh, w watching us on live, you can ask questions so with the hashtags. So the quest by 3DS, don't be shy and you will be able to ask questions to our experts. But first things first, I will say, so let's have a video by our very special guest. And once again, this is Mr. Bernard Charles, our Vice Chairman, uh, Vice Chairman and CEO. So okay. Bernard. So well, <laughs> I think now you're the first player of this event, so you are the guy to talk to us right now. Hello, everyone, dear customers and partners. I am so pleased to be with you and welcome to the Manufacturing in the Age of Experience 2020. I wish we could be together. 
Unfortunately, this year is a very special year and I remove my mask while I have it every day because there is no one close to me here. So 2020, we are all going through a very painful, difficult learning curve. This is about sustainable operation for many of you, all of us. And uh, clearly we have illustrated that after the March time frame when the COVID-19 became so visible across the world, the agility of the manufacturing sector was quite impressive. We have been there for you for years, and we have been there with you and for you in the last month, months especially. Over a few weeks, we redirected our capacity to make sure we could help you work remotely, adapt manufacturing lines using the virtual simulation, manufacturing engineering, process optimization, supply chain optimization on uh, reordering. A gigantic task across the world with this very significant customer base that you all represent and we are so proud to be there for you and with you. We have learned a lot. We have also initiated a lot of new projects, not only to adapt the manufacturing capacity that you all are running in different kinds of operations, but also to invent new ways of doing things in construction area for uh, the one uh, modular hospital, simulation in the area of air flows, evaluation of the best processes for insulation and isolation of uh, sections of hospitals, the reveal of the virtual twin experience when it comes not only to engineering but to the way we do business, we organize our plans, our operation around the globe is becoming an indispensable element. And the platform effect is revealing its full power. The platform effect is about collaborative innovation, collaborative agility across the entire life cycle. Not only engineering, not only manufacturing engineering or manufacturing operation, but also your products, what you produce in operation. When we collect data for new conditions of operating conditions, and collect those data to optimize, to improve, to evaluate the ease of transformation. That's the platform power. It's the connection between modeling simulation and what I call real world evidence in the world of manufacturing. As you can see, that year 2020 will probably be a significant reveal that yes, Experiencing the virtual twin to understand what's going on is mission critical for sustainable operation of the future. There are many, many things we want to share with you during this uh, manufacturing in the age of experience. You will see great evolution in product technology and solutions, evolutions that we have learned with you and that we have adapted for you. I hope you will enjoy those sessions on the program. I believe the potential to do more is there. As you know, investment in the kind of mission-critical software that we provide to you is not only a question of cost on investment, it's a question of capacity to reduce your total cost of ownership, your total OPEX, and we believe we can do much more together in this area. We are also investing with partners to have proximity, to elevate the value that you can get from our platforms in operation. And as you know, for many years, we have always been there for you. We are there with you. And we will go through this critical crisis together because we are putting the human at the center of everything we do to be inclusive in the process for collaborative innovation, which applies more than ever 
in the sector of manufacturing and production at large in all sectors of the industry. Enjoy those sessions. We think that uh, the program is worthwhile to look and participate. All the best and hopefully see you soon face to face. So the vision is clear, uh, Guillaume. Uh, so let's start the journey. What do you think? The quest to sustainable operation. So let's say a word about the heroes of those quests. Okay, so to participate here, you have two options. Okay, either you're a quester or you're a watcher. If you are a, a quester, you belong to a team uh, led by uh, one of uh, our Dassault system leaders in the industry. And uh, with that team, uh, you will have to undergo a quest in which you will have to take decision, answer question, and make sure that you contribute to getting your, your team to the next level. If you are a watcher, uh, you don't have any decision to make or solution to find. Just enjoy, sit back. Um, you, will be, uh, being, you will be able to catch all the actions on the live stream. Um, probably you will recognize some of the situation in which you can, uh, which you can face in real life and, and connect to that. Um, and further, uh, you will have even the opportunity to uh, interact uh, with the various, uh, the various participants by chat, uh, should you have any questions or you know, want, wants to, uh, to, uh, to raise uh, some, some points. Okay, so and don't forget you have the social media, so even if you're a watcher, you can interact with our aspects and with the us with the hashtag TheQuestBy3DS. So, okay, so now we have the context, so what about the teams? Okay, we'll have five teams. Okay, or I should say five companies because the teams are companies. So let me check my notes because I want to get that right. Um, so the five teams are uh, Mobile Trends, Navionics, Process Fab, Good Tech, and Quality Device. And, and every one of those teams will experience a scenario, and the scenario will be slightly different for each of them depending on the context in which they, they operate. Each team will have to leverage the virtual twin of their operations to, um, to find innovative solutions to uh, you know, strive or to go, uh, to progress towards uh, sustainable excellence. And this is what the game is all about. Okay, so the quest uh, to sustainable operation will be in two chapters, right? So the pursuit of excellence today. So can you tell us yes, more about this? Yes, this is chapter one. So chapter yeah. one is, is about everyday life, what we face as a challenge in, in our everyday life. Um, we will, we will look at it at three levels, operational, tactical, strategical, so that we can capture the full, um, the full aspects of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a real business and, and, and see how the 3D Experience platform is helping at every step of the way. Okay, and so tomorrow is about the resilient supply chain, right? Which is critical in 2020, I would say. It is, it is. And, and indeed, I mean, we, we believe that uh, the supply chain of the future needs to grow in resiliency indeed. Um, and, um, and that will necessitate some transformation. And it's, it's not only a question of, of technology. It's a question of business model. It's a question of how well we can collaborate within the supply chain. So tomorrow will be the day where we'll try to give a glimpse of what we think could be a possible future. Uh, and, 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 uh, and hopefully a very successful one should we, industrial learn a little better how to collaborate and discuss with our peers in the supply chain. Okay, so you and your team design these experiences, so what is the philosophy behind it? Well, the, the philosophy is to get all of you to understand the value that the 3D experience can provide in transforming yourself to a more uh, sustainable company. Um, so we wanted to do that, and we wanted to do that by you touching the value. So it's going to be highly immersive, highly inclusive, highly interactive, and, and, and so that, again, you can touch it, you can feel it, and, 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 and get inspired by what we, we show. Okay, so, so the rules are clear, and even if you really are in a 3D environment, we'll have true rewards for the teams that succeed the levels. So can you tell us more about those rewards? Sure, sure. Um, don't worry. Uh, everybody eventually will succeed every level, okay? <laughs> otherwise it's not fun. But, but indeed, I mean, we have, we have bonuses. Uh, we have uh, five industry leaders that will uh, spend some time with us uh, during uh, the course of those two days. Um, industry leaders, be them industrial uh, analysts, researchers, coming from various industry, Airbus, Cummins, um, Finair, IDC, University of Michigan, and, and all those leaders will share with us uh, some of their insights, some of their experience in the transformation toward a, a better sustainable uh, industry. So I think it's going to be extremely interesting. Okay, so thank you so much uh, for this introduction. And then we'll uh, welcome two experts from your own. So 
MC and Mr. Lucas. So come on stage. And so always on the socials, on Twitter, on uh, Facebook, on LinkedIn, and on YouTube, if you have any questions, just use the hashtag the quest by 3ds. So hashtag the quest by 3ds. So okay. So and now I am joined by the two great member of Dassault System. So MC, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? Good, thank you. And Lucas, how are you? All right. Okay, so uh, MC, you are the experience team leader. I am. So can you just bit quickly what it's about, the team experiences? What it's about? Well, it's about, uh, it's about uh, being immersed in the 3D experience platform, actually. Okay. It's uh, hands-on. Okay, and Lucas, so you are our green belt expert. So can you tell us and to the audience here what is a green green belt expert actually? Because I I don't know. Sorry, I mean sport, not in industry. So not very. Yeah, it's actually yellow belt expert yellow belt expert for for this level, and I am representing uh, the manufacturing engineer role. So we will talk today about process engineering, robotics engineering, machining and uh, also the, the factory itself, how, how to develop the virtual twin, the 3D experience twin of your facilities. All right, so uh, MC, what we should expect from this first segment of the quest to sustainable operations? Tell me. So as uh, Guillaume mentioned earlier, we have five teams. Uh, the participants have been uh, positioned in a team in accordance to their interests uh, in a specific industry. Um, we're going to, together with uh, Luca and yourself, we're going to uh, go through the challenges and try to highlight uh, at, one po at what point uh, the 3D experience platform can help them transform their uh, business. Okay, uh, so we have a question, or if our audiences ask questions, so that's going to be you answering, not me, because <laughs> I'm into a sport, not about industry, I'm <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, so Lucas, what we could expect very quickly about this first segment from your point of view? You know, um, I think that we will see really the, the different uh, ex uh, steps of uh, new product introductions and really see how everybody needs to collaborate in order to achieve one common goal, which is defining a new process. Okay, that seems very interesting and I will learn a lot th today. And oh yeah, and I won't talk about eSport, that's a promise that's not here. Uh, okay, so I think it will be time uh, to join the first team. You agree with that? We're good with that. Okay, perfect. So now we're going <coughs> to see the team Good Tech and good luck to all the five teams, by the way. So Good Tech, that will be your to play. You're on the show and you're the star for a couple of minutes. So go for it. Go for it, Good Tech. So uh, Good Tech is a, is a battery company, actually, and they're going to be uh, working on the process related to a new uh, battery cell. Currently, the battery factory has been producing only one type of cell, which has a very different shape from the one they are going to be producing uh, this time. So, Luca, from your experience as a manufacturing engineer, what do you think is their first challenge? I think that the first challenge for good tech and for all the teams in general is to have a good understanding of the product that they are going to work on. For good tech, they need to assemble a battery. So they are going to take a look to the different components of that battery and think about how they can assemble them together. Uh, we talk here about assembly, but fabrication is also a very important topic. And especially where in this industry, in the battery industry, we are producing a lot of components in-house. Uh, so they will think about the different raw material they need to put in a specific machine in order to proceed and uh, uh, manufacture the, the output, let's say. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more of uh, how a battery is composed. Uh, in the lithium-ion battery, uh, the chemical reaction is usually ma is made uh, from uh, the reaction between the anode, the cathode, and the electrolyte. And these components, you will find them in different kind of. I mean, in all the kind of battery, even the shape is different. So. Uh, the, f the first challenge for GUTEC will be to see if they are able to adapt what they are doing currently with a cylindrical battery cell and uh, to transform it into a, a process for a, a prismatical battery cell. They're very lucky that they already have a process that they could maybe get a hint yeah, of, sure. of what's coming next. Yeah, good. 
but it, it's quite a challenge still like if you are used to a very kind of process and you said hey we need another kind of battery so i guess that maybe if you're depending on the part of the country of the world you are maybe it will be challenging just to be able to work all together dif with different weather conditions for example or just come to another experience like a new battery yeah, that makes sense you need to really control every parameters and that's why you need uh, an environment to do so and I think that the 3D experience platform is really what we want to provide, the environment to capitalize the knowledge and the know-how of what you're doing every day. Okay, and we see now, sorry, if Good Tech is ready. And yes, it seems they are actually. So what we see here. Okay. So Good Tech arrived to, to the first question. And uh, we offer three different choices. Uh, and the question is, what do we do with the 3D model that has been given by the design um, office. Should we uh, share this information with the scheduling team, with the production team, or with the process engineering team? Let's see how they do. <laughs> Let's see how they do. <laughs> uh, for those who followed my comments, I, I would personally choose the process engineering team. I would too. <laughs> <laughs> because this is uh, the first step where we are going to uh, take the structure of the product and package it into the different sub-assemblies that we will find back at the different steps of the production line. And uh, you see, it, it looks yep. like uh, all, all players are really collaborating and trying to, to find the solution, <laughs> discussing uh, about the question. Yeah, they might be looking for a battery expert in the team. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the battery technology oh. are more and more complicated and sophisticated, so they definitely need one, I guess. Mm -hmm. looks but it like looks like, if I yeah. may, uh, yeah. that they commit on, on the solution I, I proposed. So they are on a dashboard where they displayed on the top uh, an old project where you can see this cylindrical battery cell I mentioned before. And they are really reusing this as a kind of template and they uh, adapt it for what you can see at the bottom of the screen. And then uh, they might have to make some modifications, some adjustment, of course, because uh, of if the shape is different, it means that the quantity might be different. It means that you might cut at the different step. And uh, all those information will also be uh, prepared into the global process in order to be uh, populated, published to the machines or to the workforce that is going to uh, execute the process later on. Wow. Okay, we're going to have a look on Process Fab, if you don't mind. Let's go. Echo, okay, let's see how it goes for them, actually. Sure. Uh, Process Fab. So what they're trying to do right now is prepare uh, for the process of uh, a new winter tire mold. So this is a very innovative design, and the challenge for this team is that they have never done anything like it in the past. So uh, and they won't. So, so that also means that they won't be able to, uh, as the previous team did, inspire themselves from a previous project. They won't have that uh, leisure. Mm -hmm. So, um, what are your thoughts on this, uh, Luca? You know, when you don't know where to start, uh, what I do usually is that I go on the web <laughs> and I'm looking for articles on the topic. They are going to do kind of the same thing. On the platform, we are providing analytics technology with the NetVibes brand. And uh, they will look for articles, research articles on the winter tire mold technology. And actually, they, they will find something about it in order to uh, guide them. So it looks like uh, the team commit is almost committing uh, on this uh, on this choice. They might be debating. <laughs> <laughs> they might be debating still. So, so yeah, the, the green dot are people that have voted, that's right? Exactly. Yes, exactly. Oh, oh, oh yeah, so we're going to go like on, on five, on six. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's one missing. Okay. And there they go. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we start back from a, a 3D dashboard. This is kind of the place where we can gather a lot of information. And now we are taking a look at this uh, interesting research article where people are saying that we should do a kind of hybrid combination of technology to perform uh, such a mold. And to do so, they advise us to use NC machining for the main part of the mold and for the very uh, particular part, which are the sipes of the tire, they will use additive manufacturing. So this is brand new. Let's see if they manage to do so in the next step. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, so basically 
are we, I mean, do they use 3D printing at some point or is it something they could use for this problem or no? Y yeah, they definitely. Might, yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay, so, so, okay, w at what precision they can print things? Because I, I do 3D printing at home actually, but you know, it's not the same level as you guys. So at what kind of precision would we can expect of 3D printing here? You know, the size in a, is a very a small part. In, it's about millimeters and even less if, you, if you're okay. looking to the tolerance that we need to Okay, to and, and we check on mobile trends actually, if they succeed to go on through this quest. So tell me what we see here. Okay, so I guess that uh, mobile trend is uh, working on the process planning. And uh, when we are defining the sequence of operation, uh, what we bring as a value with our solution is that we make the link between each step and the 3D model. It means that we are able to highlight for each step the exact status of your product. So when you say, I want to have the look at the product at this station, you got it in a few clicks. Okay, and so what we see here is like a workflow, so they just move around all the processes in the workflow and to find the correct answer, am I right? Or yeah, exactly. And they are, they are trying it uh, because we, cr we prepared a template with some empty slots. Uh, the pain for them is that they don't have the 3D. <laughs> so we really wanted to show them that it's not that easy to find the right sequence when you are missing some information. And uh, this is kind of the, the goal. So here they need to try stuff and uh, they, they need to some make some guess which you don't want to do when you're trying, as you said, to produce millions of products and not only one part at home. Okay, so, so now the process has been submitted, but once again, they are voting for this workflow. That's, am I right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we need all like 100% green lights? Actually, actually, they all had this task to complete individually, and what we're seeing now is the people who have completed. So. Uh, Oh. The, the persons that are in green are the ones who have completed this task su successfully. Okay, I, okay. Yep. They so each had that to do. Okay, yep. so I, that means, so if everyone disagree, so the process can go further, how many percent of the people should vote and say, okay, let's go, I'm, I'm wrong and you're right, so... Actually, that's why we have a team leader. So the team leader <laughs> okay. will, you know, make sense of it all and in the end, uh, try to get it to some kind of a consensus. So we're still seeing the process here, right? Exactly. And um, Okay, and sorry, but we have to check on quality device, if you don't mind. Because yes, yes, let's do because that. Because the teams are on fire. They are, they are, they are. So the team at Medico, uh, they need to implement a new variant of a def defibrillator. And it looks like they're proceeding with a risk analysis right now. And maybe, Lucas, you can tell us a little bit more about that. Okay. So when you need to uh, implement a new process in the industry, there is little margin for error, especially when you do defibrillators because it might impact human life. So here uh, the, the team included new actions, new operation in the process to secure it. They performed previously a PFME analysis. We might come back on this topic later. And they just did a flow simulation they run the behavior of the line for a certain period of time and for a certain schedule, and then they get some output that they will analyze you know, to check if they are still reaching the right productivity level. Okay, and, and should we see also the same collaboration process at this time also? I would say that it's always a collaborative process because uh, here we are exchanging between the process engineering team and also the team who define uh, the layout of the line. It means the position of the different resources. Because sometimes if you uh, do not manage the, the location correctly, you might lose time during a motion. You need to place a product for uh, a long time and that might not be necessary. Okay, so logistics is the main part here and how do you manage your environment is very, very key here too. Exactly. Okay, so let's check on the Avionics now, if you don't mind, and yes. to see how they are doing. Yep, the Navionics team uh, are tasked with a weight reduction, so they're trying to make a lighter aircraft right now. So what's going to happen with them is that they need to decide if they're going to do, uh, they're going to select some parts and decide if they want to do them with additive manufacturing or simply machining. So uh, I, it seems that right now, at the stage they are, they are 
potentially trying to uh, go through a machining process. Yeah, and somehow what we've seen was the process planning for this machining process. And they just uh, choose to uh, use a specific machine for a specific step. Because for each step of the machining process, we will need a, a machine and also the right tooling. The tooling to keep the product in position mm -hmm. while the machine is removing the material, but also the tooling to remove the material itself. So you need to, to make some assumption based on, on your experience and on the experience that you gathered on the platform. And then you will make some tests. And here, the team is actually trying to choose what kind of test they want to do. Do they want to do physical tests on the machine itself? Uh, do they want to uh, uh, subcontract such a test? Or but we're going to do good tech now, if you don't mind. Sorry to interrupt. All right. Yeah, because they are still on fire and they are playing so well. So what do we see now from good tech? Tell me. So the Good Tech team is all into robotics, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you enjoy robotics quite a bit. So what are we expecting here? Um, I do enjoy robotics, and it was actually my first topic when I arrived at Dassault System. Was it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> we defined a, a robotics painting cell. Mm -hmm. And you know, the goal here is to define the job for each robot. It must do that without interfering the job for another robot. And usually, they are all working in a very close environment, so it might be tight. And that's why we uh, use our solution to do what we call robot offline programming. Okay, so now let's we'll switch on quality device, because it seems that there is a lot of action we don't want to miss. So tell me what we see from them. It sounds like something well, in the factory. Can you tell us exactly what's what we uh, see here? Let's see. What question are they on right now? I can't tell. So Quality device. I guess they are just about uh, simulating the, the job of the robot. They uh, inserted a, a new operation in the process, and they highlighted that uh, it was too tense. They had no time to do it by end, so they inserted a collaborative robot to assist the people on the show floor. OK, so the collaborative robots, which means that these robots are aware of human being presence, I guess. They don't do whatever if someone comes in. There is some safety rules, uh, I think. Exactly. So it depends if you want to insert specific sensors to capture the location of uh, a, a person. Or in addition, at least in, in every collaborative robot, you will find also sensors that might that will uh, detect the, co the collision with, uh, with the body of somebody. So when it detects a collision, it will stop and not crush him. Uh, <laughs> against yeah. the table or something. Yeah, hopefully, like not a Terminator. <laughs> that's no, that makes totally that's sense. what we want to avoid. <laughs> yeah, 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 that makes totally sense. And uh, at some point, what is, uh, do you have any, any clue to give us? So when to put some robots instead of humans or vice versa? So maybe some, uh, sometimes humans will be better of, form of robots, right? So Yeah, especially when there is a lot of viability in the process. It means that if you need to perform different tasks at different locations, but uh, robotics might not be the, the best solution, even if we are making a lot of progress and we will be able to automatize much more tasks. That's also why we are working on robotics in general, because it helps to get the robots closer to the human without having to put cages and so on. Yeah, I think maybe it's also a question of skill of people, because maybe in all the factory you don't have maybe the same skill level, so maybe robots will be jobs and in other countries the same job will be done by a human, right? Or I'm at totally wrong. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> so I, sta I start to learn here. You're already, to you. you're already getting very good on the platform. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's the 3D things. I'm totally into it. <laughs> okay, but that's that's very very impressive to see that how this virtual environment can help people just to manage better, you know, the, the factory, all the factory processes and and the product and the quality. So I'm very very impressed and how sharp and precise the 3D model is. I mean, are versus the virtual environment. And I know that at some point this will be exact replica of what happened in real life, right? Uh, that's the goal, actually. So the virtual world is here to enrich the real world. Okay. And then uh, with the second level of the quest, we will see also how the real world will help okay. us to get So now we'll go on data. mobile trends, if you don't mind. Sorry to interrupt. Sure. <laughs> they so are definitely so <laughs> crushing so they're, they're Yes, they're going very quickly. So uh, if you remember from uh, the beginning, uh, the Mobile Trends team have uh, done a risk assessment and uh, due to the risk to the operator, they have been simulating different equipment to, uh, 
to help the operator perform his task. Okay. Um, yeah. So and that's where they are now selecting the, the equipment, correct? Yes, exactly. And they, you know, they, they are at the last step of the project somehow because they validated a possible process using a specific manipulator to help the operator lifting the fuel tank. But um, they don't want to commit with only one solution. They would like to, you know, find another alternative. When I'm Just going to, to MC my boss, I try to have <laughs> a few alternatives <laughs> in my pocket before to, to reach her. So here uh, they are looking to, uh, you know, outside source of uh, knowledge, uh, not in their team, but with uh, an external manufacturing expert, a lean manufacturing expert. And uh, this uh, expert is telling them about a concept coming from a Toyota company. It's called a Karakuri. And uh, the principle is to really adapt a smart uh, device to the actual task to perform. And uh, they designed it. And now we can see on the screen that they are simulating the overall process. And we can see that uh, there are no more postural issues on the body of the mannequin. So it means that we are much more safe. Moreover, the mannequin doesn't have to uh, lift anything heavy. It will just action springs and so on. So it's it's a good value for, for the team. Uh, one last thing about that I is the device is autonomous. It does not need energy outside source of energy, no electricity, no pneumatics energy. It means uh, that it's kind of sustainable and I would say yeah. that I would commit to this solution. Uh, of course, so would I. <laughs> wow. wow, so we have a first yeah, we have a first one, and congrats to Quality Device. Quality, oh, we're, we're all done already? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That yeah. was really quick. Then followed by Process Fab, and then by Mobile Trends. Uh, good tech, sorry. Yeah. Good, good tech, sorry, and th in third. So congrats for this. They were like yeah. crushing it. I wasn't expecting they were so fast, right? They are very, well, very uh, informed people, <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah, but they have a Dassault system expert with them, right? They do. <laughs> yes, they do. Well. We the saw that they were they were really playing though because uh, we did uh, see the process planning there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Lucas, just a quick resume of what you've seen here and mm -hmm. what's your feedback, very quickly. You know, I think that we have seen different domains, and the main value about what we try to do with the Food Experience Platform is to is to really connect the dots, connect all those domains together, so that everybody is able to access what he needs at the right moment, and if it doesn't if he doesn't have the knowledge to do it by himself, he will be able to connect directly to somebody who can do it. Okay, and very quickly, MC, your feedback? So the product, information on the product, people enriching that product that with new information, the process, uh, we saw the ergonomic study, everyone uh, collaborating at the same time on the platform, Thank one you. everything in one place. Thank you so much for this feedback. So now it's time for the halftime, the end of first game. So sorry, but I have some guests coming here. Okay. So <laughs> I'm thrilled to welcome back Guillaume and Stefan Ducli. He is the Enovia CEO. And if I'm not wrong, the Enovia is about business planning, product development and quality management. Is that right, Mr. Stefan Ducli? It's perfect. I cannot say more than that. So. I'm learning so fast here. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fast learner. Okay, so Guillaume, what happened <coughs> in this first segment? Tell us your feedback. You know, I'm obviously, I, I see that quite often, right? But, but I'm always amazed of two things. The first thing is, you talked about it yourself. I mean, you're an expert of 3D, right? Uh, I, I play 3D, but I don't know if 3D. <laughs> right, and, and, and what is striking here is 3D has become the language, the common language between the different actors. I mean, at the very beginning, we saw good tech. We, sa we saw them take design from, from, uh, from engineering, 3D, and they passed it along to manufacturing engineering, 3D, right? And then a lot of things happens around the 3D as a media of communication. So 3D as a universal language. Um, this is a, a strong belief we have at Dassault System, obviously. Okay, so that's, that's my first takeaway. The second takeaway, and actually Luca referred to it, Mike Catherine referred to it, is um, I'm always impressed at the agility with which the teams working together can look at the problem from various sides, you know, ergonomics, flow, um, M-bomb, 
work instruction, whatever, and being able to collaborate so interactively with so much agility and speed. And I think this is one of the great, great value that the 3D Experience platform can provide. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, Stefan, so you're managing mm -hmm. the portfolio of all those wonderful tools. So can you tell us what's your feedback about this first segment? <laughs> I think the first one is really, uh, I am impressed. You know, it's uh, always something different to see it in action. So just to explain a little bit of what uh, Guillaume just mentioned, I mean, really the, the platform uh, is really transforming the collaboration experience by connecting in one place the virtual representative of the physical world, what we call the virtual twin, uh, but the people and the processes, whatever they are unstructured, unstructured. I believe that we have seen uh, this magic formula, if I can say uh, so, uh, in action in a very powerful way with this uh, first session. Yeah, so the team has promises you have a reward because they all unlocked the first level. So you promised reward. So what is the, f the next, I mean, the first reward and our first very, very impressive speaker? Yes, um, actually, I'm, I'm very happy because um, uh, the first speaker is, is uh, Dr. Jeffrey Liker. Uh, He's a professor of industrial and operation engineering at University of Michigan. But more than that, he's one of the top experts in lean manufacturing, or lean at large, uh, in, in, uh, in the industrial uh, community, right? So I, we are extremely happy to have him on board. He, um, he has made uh, a lot of study about Toyota, Toyota being you know, the, the leaders, I would say, in that, in that, uh, in that field. Um, and in particular, he wrote... Uh, a book, a, a very famous book in the industrial community called uh, The Toyota Way. And, and uh, I believe there is a second edition coming out uh, those days. So good reading for all of you guys. And now we have the good video from Dr. Laker, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> I don't go. mind. Let's go. <laughs> Hi, this is Jeff Laker. I'm the author of The Toyota Way, now in its second edition, just as of this month. I'll be talking about what some call lean and green, which is how lean manufacturing can enable more environmentally friendly manufacturing. I'll be focusing on the Toyota Way and the Toyota production system, which were the original models for the Toyota production system. The Toyota production system has, is generally represented as a house. You may recognize this. There are two pillars. The best known is just in time, which is the right part, the right amount at the right time. And the idea is to uh, flow value to the customer one piece at a time with perfect quality. And quality is represented by the second pillar, which is building in quality. And that means that everybody becomes a quality control inspector and they check the the quality and don't let a bad part leave their station. The goals are in the ha house's uh, roof, which are quality, cost, delivery, safety, and morale. And then about 20 years ago, Toyota added environmentally friendly. Uh, and these are goals which then get achieved through people continuously improving their processes. So when people see a deviation from the standard, when they see a quality problem, they, in Toyota's case, they pull it and on, they pull a cord that can stop the line. And then they go back and look at these line stops and solve the problem. So people need to be flexible, motivated, and have the competency, the skills to solve problems in real time as they occur. The broader management system of Toyota is the Toyota Way. I have my version of it, which is represented in the new Toyota Way as puzzle pieces. And one of the most important puzzle pieces is philosophy, which is long-term systems thinking. What this means is that Toyota is always thinking way into the future about their purpose, and their purpose is to contribute to society through environmentally friendly mobility methods. And the way they're going to do that, the way they would deliver that is through lean processes, which are a struggle to flow value to each customer. By struggle, I mean there will always be unanticipated obstacles that need to be overcome through problem solving. So Toyota doesn't believe they can predict the future. They can create visions like the Toyota production system house of their ideal. They can set challenging goals 
and then they have to earn their way to those goals through continuous improvement, which is scientific thinking. People are the ones who do the scientific thinking. They need to be respected, challenged, and grown. And then problem solving is a scientific, systematic approach to step-by-step -step working toward the goal. As you can see, scientific thinking is right in the center. And that includes the philosophy of systems thinking, understanding the environment, understanding new technologies, understanding your current condition, and being clear on your long-term objectives. And the uh, processes need to be continuously improved scientifically, and then people are developed to be scientific thinkers. So it's through the Toyota Way and the Toyota Production System House that Toyota achieves environmentally friendly uh, production and has a positive impact on the world. Their net long-term vision is to have a net positive impact on the environment, not to bring the environment down. I have uh, Toyota's plans for the future for being environmentally friendly. Their strategic vision, I won't show you this, but I'll read it to you. They have a 2050 environmental challenge, by challenge meaning they want to achieve this. This is not just uh, a nice thing that might happen. It's an actual challenge with targets like 90% reduction in new vehicle CO2 emissions compared to 2010, zero life cycle emissions, zero plant CO2 emissions. Uh, they want to reuse water and use as little water as possible. And they want to be recycling everything. They don't want to use landfills. In fact, most Toyota plants in the world at this point are at zero landfill usage. This has been translated into a shorter term challenge from 30 years to 10 years, and they developed a 2030 challenge, and then they pulled some of that ahead to 2025, to five years out. They want to have 5.5 million electrified, electrified vehicles, 1 million of them zero emissions. They want to reduce CO2, 35% for vehicles, 25% for the total life cycle of the vehicles. They want 35% plant CO2, they want autonomous and safety technologies built in their car. So they know where they're going and they have specific measurable challenges, very long term, 30 years out, and shorter term, five to 10 years out. Those get converted into an annual plan, which is what Toyota calls Hoshin Conry. Hoshin is the goal, Conry is the direction uh, or the way of achieving the goal. Uh, so they have these goals and they need a plan, and the plan starts at the very top of the company, at a very high level, at the president's level, and then a plan is developed at the executive vice president level for functions, and then it moves to regions, and then it moves to plants and R&D centers and sales, and then it moves to departments and individuals. At each stage, they're saying, here's my annual plan, here's my, here are my goals for the year that mesh with the goals of my boss, and here's my initial plan for how I'll achieve these goals. So that still, even at the one year level, is a starting point because Toyota believes that they cannot really know the future. They can only set challenges and then work to overcome obstacles and learn their way to those challenging goals. And again, this is happening at all levels from top to middle and bottom. The biggest challenges are at the top level and then the middle level, which includes technical specialists, take on the midterm challenges, and then the smaller continuous improvements that are happening at the front line are done by shop floor workers and their team leaders and their group leaders. So everybody has a role, but and they're all continuously learning through plan, do, check, act. But the continuous learning is on the way, way to very massive, to medium, to smaller goals. So continuous improvement is the way Toyota achieves everything, uh, not just small goals. Uh, and by continuous improvement, again, it's the scientific approach, the scientific way of thinking, which is I don't know what's gonna happen in the future and I won't know if my idea works until I test it. I have to be willing to try it. I have to be willing to accept what I predict will happen is not what happens. And there is a gap, you could say it's a failure of the experiment and then I learn from that failure and I try again until I get it right. So 
this continual process, the plan, do, check, act, plan, do, check, act, plan, do, check, act, uh, is what allows Toyota to achieve really uh, sometimes monumental goals that at first seem impossible. So this is how Toyota is approaching their vision for the future to be environmentally friendly, working in harmony with the environment. I know that you have your plans and you're busy working on them as well. I wish you well with that and hope you learn a lot from this conference. Thanks for listening to me. Okay, Guillaume, such an aspiring speech from Dr. Leiker. So what do we have to keep in mind after that speech? That speak about 2050. I wasn't prepared <laughs> that for that long, actually. Uh, you know, very forward-looking to your answer. Um, I, I think there's two things we, we, um, we need to take out of this. Um, the first thing is there is no contradiction uh, between industrial excellence and sustainability, and, and which is some, sometimes thought about. Actually, if you think about it, industrial excellence achieved through the lean way is the path to sustainability. And, and, and that, I think, is, 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 is very important. This, this way is a scientific way, okay? It's the robust way to achieve your goals. So, so, um, so if, I, if I may paraphrase some of Dr. Liker's uh, motto, uh, be lean and you will be green, right? Yeah. So, so that's the first thing. The, the, the second thing uh, to keep in mind is that um, the Toyota way, the lean approach, okay? Is this is not a toolbox. And I think it was fairly clear, right? It's, yeah. it's a mindset. It's a philosophy, right? And, and uh, this is a way to, um, with the people at the center, progressively, but relentlessly, uh, rigorously, scientifically, you know, learn and progress to reach a goal. And I think this is a mindset we should, we should all have, because I think this is the proper mindset to progress to <coughs> industrial excellence. Uh, to in towards it industrial excellence. Yeah, so lean in green. Lean is green. That's <laughs> the key phrase. <laughs> At the end of the day, lean is green. Okay, thank you. So remember this. Yeah, always, I promise. So, uh, Stefan, we are moving forward the second level of pursuit of excellence. Can you do us a quick speech of that coming? Yeah, so very quick. So, uh, level two is about uh, a production trial. So, uh, each of our team will have to uh, efficiently, but of course, sustainably as well, uh, really optimize the production of uh, a new component. And, uh, and really, it's about achieving uh, the organization, I would say, agility and resilience, uh, even in case of uh, very uh, unplanned, uh, I would say, uh, events, uh, by, the, by uh, striving and driving uh, collaborative decision making. So good luck to the team, because I think this will be a, a very interesting challenge. Yeah, so don't forget, if you have any questions with the hashtag, the quest by 3DS on uh, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and... LinkedIn, because I never forget LinkedIn. So now I'm very, very pleased. Thank you so much, gentlemen. So we'll see you later. See you soon. <laughs> yeah. And I'm very pleased to welcome on stage, so MC and our green level expert, AKA Florette. So welcome back, MC, and welcome, Florette. So how are you, Florette? I'm fine, and you? Um, I'm, I'm okay. I mean, <laughs> I'm learning so much stuff here. So, yeah, I'm more into industry than eSports right now, actually, and that's pretty yeah, cool. That's good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there is 3D, there is 3D printing, there is robots, that's my kind of stuff, actually. So, so yeah, thank you for this experience. So, what are we going to do right now? And Miss Florette Dumier and Miss MC, so what's next now? Well, what's next is on this level, the green level, uh, we're going to take a step back from uh, the technical roles that we see we saw just earlier, and we're going to uh, look at uh, the operational uh, teams. And uh, what what we're going to do with them is that we're going to uh, we're going to watch them as they prepare for and uh, and proceed to their trials in production. Right. Okay, Floyd, any tips for the teams and what we're going to see now? The tips will be to collaborate. So it will be very key to synchronize and to, and to discuss, to communicate, because uh, it is key to, to success in the, in the trial. Okay, so it's going to be way about collaboration, right, and exchanging data, I guess? Yes, yes, it will be because everybody has its own data and they have to share it. And, uh, and they, all the team has to have the main understanding of the of the situation so they really need to discuss okay and, and what about those data how 
to we can able to have data from as an input because that's key. So is it through collaboration with other teams, other industries, other factories? Uh, it is within the industry. Indeed, every data has been prepared before what you saw with uh, Lucas. Okay. And everything is recorded, for example, in Enovia, in Apriso, and it is available for shop floor people. Okay. So now they have to, to share and, uh, and to know where to, to look for the data. To be oh, okay, so we have the five teams almost ready. So do you want to summarize the five teams just to back up for some all the audience here? Just who are the five teams? Who are the five teams? Yeah, yes, th that's all right. Yes. They have to be as, you know, as effective as they were on the first level, actually. Yes, they were very effective. So we have uh, Navionix, who are building a lighter aircraft. We have GoodTech, who are building a new battery cell. We have Process, Fi uh, Process Fab, I'm sorry, who are building a tire mold for the winter tire, Mobile Trend for a new variant of the truck, Quality Device for the new defibrillator, and that's the five teams. Whoa, okay, that's <laughs> so much project. That's huge, like yes. building a new aircraft. Yes, that's yes. easy. Oh, no, <laughs> that's impressive. Okay, so let's move now to see the first team. Are you okay, ladies? Yes, we so are. So, yes. Florette, we are counting on you for your expertise. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move to mobile trains. And maybe the f as the first one, we'll see how it goes. Okay. So we see something bigger with data and I can't wait to see how they will manage all those products and those projects with data. So what we see now is going to be, I think, mobile trends. So w what are the steps that are waiting for these five teams right now? So the first step that we'll be looking at with Florette is the uh, preparation of the kickoff meeting. And the kickoff meeting is an operational meeting that is very short, just a few minutes long. And the goal of that is uh, for the teams to rally and, uh, you know, keep, keep motivation up as well as be reminded of the goals and, uh, you know, help them achieve the targets. So that's the, that's the point of this uh, very short uh, meeting. Okay, that's that's good to hear a short meeting because very short meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so when you said there's not many of those. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when we say, say very short, how long will be like uh, five minutes? Yeah, five it's minutes? it's it, yeah, it's common to last about five yes, minutes, we right? Used to say five minutes, and to be sure, it's okay. okay. short. Okay, you and see, you can see that people we're are. We're going to see good tech. Good tech is ready. Okay. Yeah, and see how they are doing the short meeting or no? Yeah, <coughs> let's see. Yeah. So what we see here, Floet. So here we can see that before the trial and before this meeting, the supervisor first check the planning in Enovia to be sure everything is ready and to check what needs to be followed up during the, during the trial. Once it's done, the team comes back together for the kickoff meeting. And here it is their first question and they already start to answer. They have to select the, f the five topics they will discuss during the kickoff. And here, the right answers are the project team, to be sure everybody knows what he has to do. Then the action log, to be aligned on the action to perform. The planning, the PFMEA, what as you saw before with uh, Luca, and the checklist of prerequisites. And we will focus on this last one for the next question. Okay, so what we see here, same thing. Uh, every team member will propose their solution, and then yes. they will debate about which one is the best one exactly uh, am i right okay so we'll see they will vote about okay what's in the fact, best for this kind of question they don't have to vote because when the answer is correct it appears on green oh, on okay. the screen so it's easier. Okay. They, they will be they're noticed. good to go <laughs> yeah yes and okay. now we can see that uh, they choose the right answer at least two of them okay so half the team has right yes. so are we waiting for the two other or how are we going to move forward I think the team leader will help them a bit, right? Yes, yeah, to that's discuss and to explain why it is the right answer. Okay, and so can you tell us very briefly why it is the right answer? Yes, for example, I don't know what the answer, but if I take, for example, the PFMEA, we discussed it uh, just before, it is important for all the team to know what are the risks and how to avoid them. So before the trial, it is a, a good thing to, to talk about. Okay, it sounds like they are b moving forward and they just down to the next step. So what's on the screen right now? Can you help us yes. write? Um, yes, the second question is about the action to take immediately to be sure the trial will be a success. And here the keyword is immediately and they have to be very 
careful about this keyword. Uh, the, the first answer is to that they need to ensure the part availability in the warehouse because if you don't have the part, you can't do the trial. That so makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and so uh, immediately, but immediately they don't need sacrificing safety, for example. No, no, no. So, of so, so the tool can help to them too on that part. We we have to ensure the safety first, and uh, uh, we can't imagine uh, a team working without safety. Okay, so a good tech moved forward. So yes, they good game choose to the them. right answer. Yeah. And here we can see that they have a view of the the warehouse in Apriso, and this solution helps to to look for a specific part within the warehouse. And here we can see that it is uh, green. So green mean parts are available. Okay, so basically you are able to see on your manufacturer re virtually where your parts are yes. and truly are, like in exactly, real life. Exactly, because mm -hmm. as soon as you, you put a part in the warehouse, you have to record it in a prison wow. and yeah. to record the stock level. Okay. So then every everything is uh, okay. accessible. So now we check mobile trends. Yes. Wait to see how they're going. And they have to um, to check the second action to take immediately. And the second one is to check if there is enough time planned for the trial. So they have access to uh, to Delmia scheduling solution. And uh, and we can see that there is a slot in the planning for for the trial, because it's it's important. In fact, when we are uh, setting a line for the very first time, even if we don't know. If there, are, what will be the next project? It is really important to dedicate time for trials, even if we don't know which trial. But the time has to be has to be prepared. And here we check if it if it is uh, prepared. So if we have the time, and if all the other work order will not be late. Okay, and and trying new things is always a way to innovate, and exactly. try new things and be more performant and maybe discover a new product or maybe. I mean, winning time on the production, maybe, or is that possible to do try and then save, like for for example, two days or one hour on production line? That will happen. It it is two two different things. Like let's say we have the trial for future production, okay, and we have the standard production. So the the trial is for a project that doesn't exist yet, so okay. it will not save time for the current so for the current production. Okay, because the standard is standard, as I yes, heard about yes. industry is like, don't touch the standard, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay, so basically, if you want to do another production uh, chain, you have basically to build another factory, right? <laughs> to, to, don't touch the standard. Um, you have to see if there is uh, time available in your current factory, because maybe if you have, a, for take the example of the car, yeah. if you launch a new car, the last one will be less sold. So on the production line, there will be less and less car produced for the previous reference and more and more for the next one. So you will just have to organize this, uh, this link between the two references production. Well, um, uh, uh, okay, so MC, as a, the team experiences leader, what's your feedback on what you see here? Are they collaborating? Are they doing well? I think they are doing very well. Uh, I think they're advancing as expected. I think uh, the team leader is doing an excellent job in guiding everyone. And I think, I think it's just fantastic that everyone is participating. We can see that, uh, you yeah. know, a lot of uh, action by the teams. Yeah, it's always cool to see the, the, the virtual people are working on the, the, the factory, actually. It, <laughs> I like it, it really I like it so much. So let's jump to Navionics and see how they are going. Okay. Yes, uh, so the Navionics team is looking at quality right now. But uh, Florette, is quality very important during a trial? Yes, of course it is. Quality is important mainly in trials because if we are not able to produce with the right quality the customer will never buy the the project so often there is a balance between i want to produce quicker but if i produce quicker the quality will not be there so we will to find the the, the right balance between the two and how about uh, how about uh, when we do find issues how do we how do we communicate that so when we find issue, what is important is to di to discuss it on a very visual basis. The, um, the best way is to have the real part in our end to discuss the defect because we can see the defect and discuss it. But for that, when the operator is at its workstation and when he has to record the defect, 
what is the closest of second the best <laughs> yes of the of the real part it is the 3d model so he record all its defects on the 3d model and then everything is recorded and everything is accessible by everybody so we we keep uh, track on uh, on what happened okay so you modelize the defect in the 3d model right Am yes, right? we can point it and we can say if it's a minor defect, a major defect, and the, if the part is scrapped and so on. Wow. Okay. That means you can share it with all your industries in the world and then having okay. some feedback from everywhere, right? Yes. And we can work to, to correct it and we can, s we can see if, uh, if we are alone with this kind of defect or if it appears also to another company or to, to, uh, to another plant. Yeah. And then we can, uh, we can see why it appears everywhere or why why they manage not having this defect and why we have the defect so we can discuss with them and compare compare our results yeah because if i understand it and correct me if i'm wrong it could be from a supplier for example with a bad batch of materials yeah. it could be a defect on a robot maybe or yes. bad program uh, in fact we we used to say that defect can come uh, okay. through different channels, what are material, means, environment, yeah. and so on. So for example, material, it is the supplier send me a wrong part. Okay, so we'll check now uh, quality device about all these things you just said. Yes, we will see what we were just discussing about. Looking at uh, work yes. instructions here. Yes, this is a 3D work instruction. So it is the standard way of producing. We were speaking about, we are talking about standard. So this is the standard. And the operator at his workstation has access to the standard and it can follow all the steps to produce the part. And when he produces, we can follow the, its performance. So here we can have an overview of all the line and workstation by workstation, we can see uh, with KPIs if the performance is at the target. Wow, I, I love KPIs, by the way. I love numbers, you know, so that's sure. pretty, pretty amazing. And I can imagine the, the amount, the huge amount of data you have to process to extract those KPIs. So, so is it through this tool also that you set up those KPIs who are in charge of those KPIs? Indeed, the, the KPIs are set, set it up before where, when we are modeling all the line and they are set it up in Apriso. And here, you, the workstation output are also recorded in Apriso. So Apriso is the best solution to compare the target and uh, the current situation. Okay, and, I, and I've seen the plan of the factory and the map of the factory. So is, it, is that mean that you can also measure the time that a product will move from this place to this place yes. and, and the worker from this place to this place? Exactly, yes. Wow, okay, and so I, I think you have some AI working on and see that you can do that and you can do that, right? Or it, it is the best way to, to simulate flows, for example, and to, to see what is the best solution of, of flow and what will uh, save the, the time. Okay, so now, the now there are, we have another 3D model on. So yes. what are they doing right now? So, uh, I was talking about quality before and recorded the, recording the, the quality data. So here we are on the defibrillator and uh, the operator is recording defect. So you see each red point is a defect and he can say exactly where the defect occurs on the, on the defibrillator and it can describe each defect. So it is really a, a database of, uh, of defects. Okay, so let's move to, to mobile trains if you don't mind and see how things are going for them. Uh, wow, what do we see here? It <laughs> looks like very impressive for my eSports. So it looks, like it looks like they're having quality issues. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they, they have quality issue and now they, they are launching a problem solving meeting. So we, again, we are talking about meeting. Um, they're using 3D Lean. Yes, and for this they are using 3D Lean, which is our solution for operational meeting. You have to imagine that everybody is uh, in front of, of one screen and they, uh, they discuss and they can uh, draw on the screen to, to exchange the, the, uh, their ID. And even if people are in remote, they have access to the screen and everything is updated uh, live. So they, they can uh, write, draw, write sticky notes and everything appears live. So here we can see how they use simple tools like uh, 5W2H or here Ishikawa diagram to, to solve their, their problem. So all the team wrote sticky notes, it appears live, and here they found different uh, root causes to the problem, 
and they check in green what is the, the most possible root cause and they take action to, to check if it is the real cause or not. They, can, they have a tool to plan the action and to assign a responsible. And um, on the day before, they did their action. They come back again for a second session of problem solving meeting and they discuss, okay, I did my action and I found that the problem comes from the Karakuri uh, that is making, uh, for example, scratch on the fuel tank. And now we know the root cause and we will be able to correct it. So what is, uh, what is important here is that we rely on collective intelligence to, found the, to find the root cause. The 3D Lean, the solution, didn't come with a lot of root cause and say, you have to modify this or you have to do that. No, it is the people, they discuss together, they talk, and they found the solution. Okay, we have, let's have a look about the five teams uh, at the same time. So tell me exactly what we see. And wow, that looks like they are the uh, what's the yes, name? They are Ika pretty close. Ikishiwa? Ikish Ishikawa. Ishikawa sorry, I know you sorry. like Japan, so yeah. it's a <laughs> Japanese word. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Ishikawa. So, we have two teams on Ishikawa yes. uh, uh, plans. So what? All diagram, sorry. Yeah. Yes, diagram. So, we can see, I guess, that. You're all at the quality step. Yes. Some are people are capitalizing already on uh, Inovia. Yes. So, it is really. They are all really close. Okay. So. Yeah. So the results will be yes. It's going. It's a tight race right now. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is. I I'm putting my money on uh, oh. good tech. Yes. I well, what do you think? Mobile or trends or maybe mobile, mobile okay, trends. Okay. So, so good tech for MC. Yeah. Um, mobile trends. Okay. Mobile and trends. I I don't know anything in industry. <laughs> let's be honest. So I don't know. She's, uh, she's the expert. I I, I know. So uh, I will. I would side with her. I would say woof. <laughs> they, they are a few seconds before. <laughs> yeah, but I would say I'll go. Yeah, I, Navionic seems to be a little bit late, I will say. Yes. Because they, they are not in the Ishikawa <laughs> diagram. Is it right? Ishikawa? Oh, no, no, they are, they are coming. Oh, OK. Quality device is a little bit late. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so yeah, but they can go faster. So maybe you don't have like a mm, maybe, maybe. The, the sparkling going on. OK, and oh, we'll see the, the team live, the first one. So this I'm thrilled to see exactly who's going to win. So what are the next steps now? We see we Process Fab and Avionics are a little bit late. Yes. PMFEA the right now. Um, Good Tech and Mobile Trend are at the, at the last step. So now they are filling the PFMEA. They are updating it. Uh, during the trial, they found defects that wasn't in the PFMEA. So now, for future production, it is really important to record those defects and to capitalize on the knowledge of the company. Okay. So uh, can you tell me what is PFMEA uh, stands you for? You didn't listen to Luca. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I have so <laughs> many not information. Not no, PFMEA means it's too much information no, for my brain at the same I'm time. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> I know. Sorry. PFMEA it is a method that uh, help to to know every failure mode that, that can occur okay. on a process and how to reduce that risk and how to avoid it appear. Okay, so Mobile Trends we first. Have a winner. First, we have so a winner. congratulations yes. to congratulations. Mobile Trends. <laughs> so who guessed Mobile Trends? Uh, yeah, so our expert, expert is a true expert. That's the demonstrations sure. live, ladies and gentlemen. And don't forget on the socials, on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube and LinkedIn, if you have any questions. So let's go to the hashtag. And the hashtag is the quest is 3DS. So, any feedback from what's going on for the last one? <laughs> yeah, Navionix, they were my, my, my yeah. one and my bet. And <laughs> yeah, I definitely not in the industry, but I will learn. I will learn. Okay, so thank you so much, ladies, for this feedback. So very quick wrap up of everything, MC, about what uh, we see. Collaboration is key. Uh, what we saw in the first level was all virtual, and now everything that we had been preparing comes alive in the in the shop floor on the second level. Uh, and you, Florette, last? Yes, just thing. before we were talking about the Toyota model with 4P. With Luca, we saw the process. And now we just saw the people and the problem solving. So we are three pillars. Wow, OK, so sorry about the PFEMEA Ishikawa <laughs> thing. But uh, my, my, my feedback on that as, as a, a total newbie on industry yeah. is how simple is it to manipulate 3D model? Because I do 3D printing at home, so I used to do some very basic 3D printing modeling. And that's so uh, complicated when you don't want things. And I see a whole factory like in 3D model. 
I can't imagine how big this task will be for people like you to do and, and the tool we need to do that. It's not that big when you consider that we use libraries. So let's say uh, you want to insert a machine or you want to put a, a, a worker. We have all of this available in libraries. So it's quite, it's not a big task. <laughs> it does look huge, but it's not that big of a task. Okay, thanks to you for, for your software. So that's pretty cool. There you go. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank so we'll welcome much. back our gentlemen, as you know, Stefan and Guillaume. So thank you so much and welcome Guillaume and Stefan for this oh, feedback about the second part. So sorry guys about PFMEA and all that stuff, but I'm learning, okay? You have to learn, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I'm learning. That's a total that's a good news. That's a good yeah, that's a total new world and that's very, very interesting. So that's, that's pretty cool. Whew. So Guillaume, so level two, what's your feedback? Um, you know, sometimes people oppose lean practices, and we discussed quite a bit about lean and technology, right? Saying lean is about paper and, 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 uh, and, and certainly not uh, can be virtualized. Um, obviously, what we saw today is totally different. What we saw today is the usage and the leveraging of the virtual twin and the 3D experience platform actually enhance lean practices. Why? Because it, it allows us to have a broader reach, right? More people, more experts. Uh, better data, uh, more data, better contextualized. Uh, we talked about a lot uh, around the 3D, so better contextualized in the 3D or other places. So this is actually enhancing uh, the, the capability of standard lean practice. So if you want to learn a, a new um, Japanese word, okay, <laughs> let's talk about Kaizen. Okay. Kaizen is the continuous improvement process. And I would say today that... Uh, uh, digital Lean, as supported by 3D Lean, which saw on the, on the 3D experience platform, is actually the Kaizen step of classical Lean practices. Okay, so that's <laughs> just... You have to take some notes, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> I, 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 will, I will watch the, the, the replay <laughs> later. Digital <laughs> notes. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> amazing. So, uh, at some point, would they have completed level two, right? So they need, I mean, they just had their reward. So, Stefan, can you tell us about this reward, what we're going to have right now? Next speaker, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I can. I can. So, uh, as you as you have seen, we have uh, very we are very lucky to have uh, several prestigious speakers with us today. On the next one, I'm very pleased actually to introduce uh, uh, Kevin Prouty, uh, who is the group vice president uh, uh, in IDC uh, for their uh, energy and ma manufacturing insight practice. I would say. Okay. And with his team, actually, is provi providing research based uh, advisory and consulting for energy executives, primary in oil and gas, and uh, utilities. Okay, so pretty huge subject. Exactly, and he has a deep background, you know, uh, been working in, uh, in, uh, on, on those topics in uh, Aberdeen Group, Motorola, Gartner, to name just a few. And he has both uh, hands-on, you know, uh, hands-on uh, experience, uh, both as a user and as a system integrator uh, for uh, operations software. So he's going to tell you uh, quickly about uh, uh, the, the mandate to transform uh, middle management if you want to achieve sustainable uh, driven performance. Wow, okay, so it's more about human than robots on this peak. Let's see. I guess. Yeah, so we have a speak about Kevin Prodi. So ladies and gentlemen, the team, the five teams and you, let's enjoy this video if you want. So, okay, let's go for Kevin Prodi. Hi, I'm Kevin Prodi. I'm the Group Vice President for Manufacturing Insights and Energy Insights at IDC. I'm here to talk about sustainability and the transformation of middle management. So at IDC, we did a survey to judge the importance of sustainability to manufacturing companies. We looked at it during the pandemic and slightly after the pandemic as we're coming into the recovery. What we found is 60% of companies see sustainability increasing in importance. But we also found uh, through a, a couple of indexes we use, the first index we use is the, what we call profitability and performance index for manufacturing companies. And that's the index we use to measure how digital a company is, how much investment they're making in digital. We also use the Dow Jones sustainability index. And I'll let you people read over the, the methodology on the right there that talks about where these numbers come from. But I think the most important thing to take from this particular slide is when you look at the companies that are, have a high investment in sustainability, 
you see them in the blue line there. Then you look at companies that have a, a lesser investment, whether it's a middle investment or a lower investment in sustainability, you can see their profitability performance is actually significantly lower than companies making that high investment level. And I think it's really important to keep in mind that those companies making the high investment level have figured out how to use sustainability to drive operational excellence and operational improvement. So let's look at some real world examples and really get a feel for what are companies doing and what are they focusing on. Let's first look at this um, Global 2000 chemical manufacturer and their North American operations. They looked at their uh, power and water uses met metrics. They were added to their plant management portfolio for metrics in 2018. Uh, then they invested less than 50,000 per plant in power and water monitoring technology. And they, the, probably the biggest change they made is they started to centrally manage and look at the engagements with local utilities and start to manage all their contracts in a more unified manner. What they were able to do with a combination of changing their plant management um, uh, performance metrics in a small investment in technology in the plants, and then a central organization to manage all these investments, they were able to reduce their corporate electricity bills by 12% and their water consumption by 8% in 2019. A second example, a uh, tier one automotive supplier with global operations, they had 62 different teams monitoring uh, health, safety, and environmental uh, performance in 2018. That's a lot of teams to have to manage. What they decided to do was consolidate that all and all the sustainability activity into one operational team reporting directly to the global COO. What they saw was a 30% de decrease in 2019 uh, in environment, environmental and health material incidents. Now, material incidents are incidents that are, are considered significant and are, and are reportable. Uh, what that did is that drove a planned reduction in their insurance premiums by 6% in 2020, of which they've realized some of that now. So those are two great examples of companies that have taken relatively simple investments in sustainability, reorganized around sustainability, and really driven some, some good performance. So what's the government uh, governance model for sustainability in manufacturing? Well, typically what you see, we see over 40% of uh, manufacturing companies really driving it as top down. That is senior management decides based on brand risk or compliance that they really have to focus on sustainability and they drive those initiatives down through middle management down into the point of activity. Now we see about 20% of the companies, and these are probably the companies that we saw that were outperforming everyone else, but 20% of them have what I call an integrated sustainability approach. And that is they've made sustainability and the drive to sustainability an organic part of their operation. It's not a separate organization that is completely independent from the rest of the company. They've changed incentives for their managers. They've changed their goals and objectives for middle management so that they are all pulling the same way towards sustainability. Now, one of the things to be, keep in mind here is that uh, I talked about middle management a little bit, but what happens with middle management in a manufacturing organization is all decisions from senior management have to pass down through it and then all activity and information that happens at the plant level or operational level have to pass up through it to senior management to make the decisions. For one thing, that's a time-consuming process. The other thing that happens is many times their incentives and goals are misaligned. And so what we have always said around um, sustainability is that that creates a sustainability gap because what happens is you have top management pushing uh, projects and incentives down, I mean, I'm sorry, projects and, and uh, goals down and they're passing through middle management, which has no incentive to really drive that sustainability into operations if it's going to negatively impact operations. What we see in these companies that are more tightly aligned and have sustainability integrated into their operations is that the top level of senior management, middle management, and the point of activity in the operations are all aligned. They all have the same incentives. They have the same goals around sustainability. So sustainability becomes an integrated organic part of the operation, and it contributes to the drive towards operational excellence. So what the, one of the ways we see companies try to get around this middle management issue is they create another organization or a, a parallel organization called digital engineering. They pull some of those middle managers out who have that institutional knowledge and that domain expertise on the operation. They pull them out and, get, and they pull out the ones who have digital skills. They put them in this digital engineering organization and they create um, this organization built on operational sustainability. 
And that means what that means is those middle managers are now incented and they have the tools to drive that sustainability as an organic and integrated part of the operation. And it's also a key part of what we call resilient decision making. And that is they're moving information up and down the chain much faster. So those resilient decisions are both more effective and they're faster. And that is what the things that will drive sustainability and operational excellence in parallel. So what's our guidance from IDC when we look at all this information? If you're serious about sustainability, make it a part of the portfolio of metrics you use to measure operational performance. Don't be satisfied with a top-down push. You have to get your middle manager engaged through incentives and individual performance plans. If you do not engage them, if you do not have their incentives aligned with the rest of the organization, they are going to eat at, at best, they'll ignore it. At worst, they'll work against it because they're trying to drive their own operational goals to meet their incentives. You have to start transitioning sustainability operations and make it a transparent and resilient decision make, making framework. In other words, you've got to build a framework that when you make decisions, sustainability is a key part of that decision making process. You can look at sustainability as separate projects. You can look at it as a way to, to uh, satisfy a brand or a compliance issue. But if you do that, you're never going to have sustainability, a truly organic part of the decision making process or part of your operational excellence drive. Thank you. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I very much appreciate the time you've taken to listen to me. Wow, such an inspirational speech by Kevin Prodi. So we are then the end of first day and Stefan, what what an inspirational speech, so what to remember of those speech? I, I <clears throat> for me, the part of middle management was very, very interesting. No kidding, very interesting. So what's your feedback on this? Yeah, so just a few points to, to share with uh, with uh, with all of you. Uh, so in, as it was said, I mean the COVID nineteen situation, which is actually impacting all of us, uh, as uh, as as we all know has actually indeed accelerated the priorities for the investments and sustainability. And it was really interesting to see that uh, uh, those investments, even if limited, actually have a positive impact on, uh, at the end on the profitability, on the, the, uh, the, the final result of the company. So I think this is uh, an interesting uh, uh, findings. Uh, and, and it is also clear that all the leaders who are engaging in, on this route really have to uh, engage in an integrated approach Uh, engaging the entire organization at all its levels uh, and put in place a new and um, adapted governance model. On the middle management topic, uh, I think it is, it is clear that if you don't get those people really engaged, uh, you cannot deliver on those, um, we'll say on those objectives. Uh, so you need to have the right KPIs and measurement systems uh, to make sure that, uh, that uh, actually you, you to drive the change. And obviously, I mean, when you see uh, this uh, framework, uh, what is being proposed here by, by Kevin, uh, it requires to have an end-to-end -end solution to really actually first connect people and empower them uh, with the right uh, uh, data, you know, uh, uh, AI, as we saw in the previous session, uh, and analytics. Uh, and I think this is where, this is where I think the, the platform uh, has, a, has a key role to play. And, uh, and I think this is why we are here. So... Um, So, so Guillaume, really, I mean, uh, first, thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, really uh, inspiring day. It was short, but very dense. My pleasure. I learned a lot. Uh, and I think you are, you are the owner of the last words for the day. On All right. Um, okay, so today what we did is, is we, uh, we started our quest towards sustainable operations. We started and looking at the uh, more operational and tactical model. Um, tomorrow, we'll go strategical. Okay, tomorrow we'll get out of the four wall of the factory because we are in the factory today. Yes. Uh, we're going to go out of the four wall of the factory. We're going to go in the supply chain outside, right? Uh, much more complex, okay? But the impact of decision are Im immensely important, right? So the challenge today for the team will be big, and I think this is going to be extremely exciting. So guys, uh, thank you for joining us today and, and, and be there tomorrow. It's going to be fun. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. And I try to learn more things. Um, so basically, <coughs> if you are on the social media and you want to be part of this quest, don't forget to register on different social media. So on Twitter, Facebook, on YouTube, and on LinkedIn. And you have a form, to, a form to fill and you have access to your own experience. So thank you for that, for those people who are in the teams. 
because they are very interesting, and I'm curious, and maybe I'll try to do my best also. <laughs> I hope. Remember huh? the Japanese word, you know? Yeah, Kaisen, right? He's Kaisen, Ishikawa. Ishikawa, yeah. The Ishikawa was pretty, pretty challenging for me to remember. Kaisen is more easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah and PFMIE. PFMIE, this is not Japanese. Yeah, I know, but that's also all the other challenge for me. So uh, thank you for the five yeah. teams. They are competed well. I mean, that was crazy that's how they crushed that. Thank you for the team leaders, also for the Dassault System team leaders with them. Uh, they were very helpful, I'm sure, of it because some people were just crazy fast. So, okay, and see you tomorrow, guys. Uh, so, same place, same hour uh, for this, uh, we say, black belt experience, right? Uh, the season let's two. Yeah, yeah let's see season two black belt. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so, so, okay, so let's see you tomorrow, same place. So, same social media, YouTube, Twitter, and uh, LinkedIn, sorry, and Facebook. Okay, now the video recap for the day. They were fast to do that. So let's check the video recap for today.